So French then says, compounding the free speech challenge, the online right directs immense vitriol at those conservatives who dissent from the culture of censorship. Most notably, social media filled, uh, most notably, social media filled with claims that anyone who disagreed with the scope and wording of HB 1557, even if they agreed that young children should not receive instruction on sexuality, was a, quote, groomer. French says this tweet from DeSantis' spokesperson is representative. This is the tweet from Christina Pouchot. We've talked about this tweet before on this show. She said the bill that liberals inaccurately call Don't Say Gay would be more accurately described as an anti-grooming bill. If you are against the anti-grooming bill, you are probably a groomer, or at least you don't denounce the grooming of four to eight-year-old children. Silence is complicity. This is how it works, Democrats, and I didn't make the rules. So, of course, first of all, Christina Pouchot's tweet is, the first part of the tweet is correct. It is more accurately described as an anti-grooming bill. The second tweet is just funny because she's co-opting language from Ibram X. Kendi, where he says, silence is violence. If you are not actively um, anti-racist, then you are then you are a racist. So that is just funny. That That is that is a funny tweet, no matter, well, you would think no matter who you are, you'd understand um, the, the humor in that, the irony in that. French, however, does not see the humor in it. He says, grooming is a word with a meaning, specifically referring to using manipulative behaviors to gain access to victims. While, acce- while activists are trolling online, knowing full well that they're abusing the term, they're also connecting with the language of the QAnon conspiracy theory, which is based on the claim that gangs of pedophiles have infiltrated the highest reaches of American government. Accusations of pedophilia or grooming can be deadly serious, and they're directly related to violence and threats of violence across the nation. So a couple of things here. Grooming is the conditioning of a child for sexual abuse. It does not matter if the adult who is conditioning the child for sexual abuse is doing so for sexual gratification for himself or for political gratification for himself. What matters is he is preparing the child. He is conditioning the child to accept the sexual abuse. And I think we can all agree that it is sexual abuse to mutilate a child's body, to psychologically um, damage them, to put them on hormone blockers, to cut off their genitalia, to remove their breasts, to give them hormones that stop puberty. This, this, this mutilation of body, this mutilation of sexuality, this mutilation of fertility is certainly sexual abuse. And what, what the transgender ideology, as taught by many teachers, does is groom children for this sexual abuse. So again, doesn't matter if it's sexual gratification or political gratification, if you are if you are grooming children, if you are conditioning children to accept sexual abuse, if you are teaching them an ideology that leads them to be accepting of being transgender, of rejecting their biology, of mutilating themselves with drugs and then with surgery, then you are grooming that child for sexual abuse. So it, it, it's not a co-opting of the word. And I, I, I'm, I'm, We've talked about this many times. This is not supposed to be bombastic. This is this is a derivative of the original the original meaning. When I say original meaning, we we've understood the word groomer um, to be defined narrowly in the past, right? To be an individual pedophile that grooms that conditions a child to accept um, sexual abuse for that pedophile's sexual gratification. But again, changing whether it's sexual or political gratification doesn't actually change the grooming part of the definition of the word groomer. And then to associate this with QAnon, a radical, very fringe, very small, absurd um, group. I don't even know if I would call them a group, but it, it's really just an insult from the radical left of a few a few fringe crazies who believe in weirdo conspiracy theories to associate all conservatives who have a problem with teachers grooming children for sexual abuse for a political agenda with the QAnon conspiracy theory is is unfair, it's unjust, and it's incorrect, most importantly. It's it's patently incorrect because this is what I, I did an episode this week on this exact topic. If you read the founding documents of queer theory, the principles of which are being taught to children in public school, the founding document of queer theory is the, the, the writer is an apologist for pedophiles. She's actually advocating for pedophilia as long as that pedophilia, she says, they're called, she calls it cross-generational encounters, as long as that pedophilia is consensual. She argues that people should have a right to consume child pornography, the torture of babies and toddlers and small children, as long as it happens in the privacy of their own home. There is pedophilia inherent to queer theory And queer theory is the ideological underpinning of what is being taught to children in public schools. What's being taught to children, they're taught that there's, that gender is fluid, that gender is disconnected from sex, that gender is not binary, but it's, it's a spectrum, that there's, there's no, there's no sexual immorality as long as it's a consensual sex act. All of these different things are the principles of queer theory 
which embraces pedophilia. So no, it is not, um, it, it is simply incorrect to associate, to associate any, anybody who is pointing out the reality of the fact that pedophilia is inherent to queer theory um, with a conspiracy theory online. He, French goes on to say, to decry the right-wing wave of censorship is not to declare that anything goes, especially when it comes to the education of young children. A school district can and should use caution and solicit parental input when introducing sex education into the classroom. In fact, as the Miami Herald reported, instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity is not currently a part of the curriculum in the state's kindergarten through third grade classrooms, and that's entirely appropriate. But this is the problem. This is, this is why the language that, that French called vague earlier is actually important because it doesn't have to be part of the official curriculum for it to exist in the classroom. We see individual teachers who are introducing this to children intentionally. They are prompting these questions in order to answer with their ideology. And so it has to be not just part of the curriculum. It has to be materials so that it applies to books in the library. It has to be instruction so it applies to any, any person in a position of authority who is, who is telling a child um, something the child would interpret as being right versus wrong or reality versus not reality. So it has to encompass, it has to encompass um, this. It's also funny because this is the leftist narrative when it comes to these bills. They say these bills are going to cause kids to, uh, Buddha judge, I think it was, said kids are going to die because of the Florida don't say gay bill. And yet at the same time, leftists tell us, well, this actually isn't happening in public schools. So if it's not happening in public schools, then how are kids going to be killed because of it? You can't have it both ways. Either it's it's not happening, therefore you shouldn't care if there's a prohibition on it because it's not happening, or it is happening. And the reason that you care that there's a prohibition on it is because you want that ideology disseminated into our public school system. So it, it's, a, um, it's a narrative from the left that is intended to obscure the truth. And French ought to know better than to engage in this.